Now it's time to take a deep dive into a highly anticipated and potentially massive upcoming IPO. We're talking about the Chinese fintech giant Ant Group. It is one step closer to a potentially record-breaking IPO. The company reportedly getting the green light today to go public in Hong Kong. And according to several reports, Chinese regulators have given Ant Group approval for the Hong Kong leg of its IPO. It is targeting Shanghai for the second part of its dual listing. And so far, there's been no word yet on approval for that. Okay, what exactly is Ant Group? <laughs> You might be wondering. Okay, the fintech giant is 33% owned by Alibaba and controlled by Chinese billionaire Jack Ma. Ant Group runs the massively popular Alipay mobile payments app in China, which is over 700 million monthly active users. Uh, along with that flagship, the company runs several other financial products from insurance to wealth management. But a large part of its business model is selling financial technology products and generating technology service fees. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, Jill, some um, Americans, and this is not said to list here on a U.S. exchange just yet, they, they might not be super familiar with what Alipay is, for instance. But if you're in China, I mean, in anywhere in Asia, you know exactly what this is, right? And we've heard time and time again the comparisons between these uh, Chinese behemoths as to ones we see here in the U.S. There isn't necessarily an apples to apples comparison of what Alipay is, uh, but we do know that any connection to Alibaba, to Jack Ma, um, has really been a success in that particular region. You know, I'm glad you say that because we always even try to say what is Alibaba compared to something in the in the U.S. And we would go with Amazon. But the truth is, Alibaba is so much more than Amazon is. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's it's much big. And Amazon is huge. It's one of the most valuable companies um, in the U.S. right now. So it's just, you know, I, I think that when you're trying to put this into perspective, that 700 million monthly active users, we have 400 million people who live in this country. Mm -hmm. So there are more people using that app, um, almost double, in fact, than, than there are Americans. Yeah, it's a really good point. And this company, Ant Group, is looking to raise up to $35 billion in an IPO, which would make it the world's biggest public offering to date. Just goes to show how expansive it is in that particular region of Asia. Take a look here. Uh, Saudi Aramco was number two. This is a list of the top 10 largest offerings. Facebook ranking, I do believe, at number 10. But anyway, uh, at this current IPO rate, it would place it more than $5 billion above that 2019 Saudi Aramco IPO, $10 billion ahead of Alibaba. Jack Ma was down here on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange when Alibaba went public roughly five years ago. Even the fifth largest IPO ever back in 2006 seems small compared to what Ant Group could potentially do. Ant Group poised to push Enel off the top 10 list. That company went public back in 1999 with $16.6 million. Uh, there aren't many times when the phrase only $16 billion can be used, uh, but this is one of them. So Ant Group's IPO could potentially be double what Facebook's 2012 IPO was. Just to clarify, we're talking all in billions here, not millions. Uh, you see Facebook at the end of this list, $16 billion, which was still a massive IPO at the time, Jill. And just to point out, um, as you mentioned it, I was on the floor of the stock exchange, I think you may have been as well, when Alibaba went public. Um, a few years ago with Jack Ma there on the floor ringing the opening bell. Um, and just interesting to note, um, this company not looking to go public here in the United States, looking to go public in Hong Kong. Um, is that a sign of the times, you know, and just the political tension that we have seen between the U.S. and China? I think it is a really good point. And China, obviously, just in the past two years, has tried to control more of Hong Kong that was largely seen as an international business capital because it was autonomous. But for investors around the world, they've got to realize, too, it's much easier currently to invest in a Hong Kong-listed stock, a global stock, than it is to list in any of these, to actually invest in any of these stocks uh, listed in China on the Chinese exchanges. So presumably, at least on the surface, international investors would be able to access this because of the Hong Kong listing. The China listing is going to be a lot harder, but that's, I think, why they have this dual listing. And you're right, notably not here in the U.S., uh, potentially partly because of COVID and, of course, because of the Trump administration's tough rhetoric on China.
Yeah, I mean, on that note, Amp Group's power in America in, in a bit of rough water. Reuters reporting that Washington's trying to get the Chinese fintech giant onto the U.S. entity list, a blacklist that restricts American companies from doing business with individuals or firms listed on it. The entity list requires American companies to get a license before exporting certain products to blacklisted firms. The move is not expected to rock Ant Group's IPO. The company is a very small international business. It's mainly focused on the China market. Um, so experts agree that any blacklisting would be largely symbolic. But experts could also say it could make other countries cautious about linking their tech ecosystems to China. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jill, so I think a good example of how the rhetoric is ramping up, there's a New York Times lead story today that as the U.S. tries to crack down on Chinese scholars, I mean, you literally can pick anything, whether it's Huawei, whether it's IPOs, whether it's uh, interns and academics here in the U.S. from China. The U.S. is trying to crack down on that. And just recently this morning, China is saying if you're going to uh, basically restrict scholars here in America from China, then we are going to consider detaining Americans in China. So just goes to show the backdrop of all of this, right? How high the tensions are between both of these regions. Uh, but if you're an investor and you want growth, I mean, Ant Group is probably a company that you at least want to look at. You know, Kristen, I remember when, when um, Alibaba went public a few years ago and I was talking to a trader on the floor um, and I said, you know, what is the case to Americans or just retail investors? Why would they want to invest in a company like Alibaba? And he said it's because it's a way for them to invest in some capacity in the Chinese consumer, which we know has been this driving force in the global economy. Um, and I think that that's important. And, and when we think about just the tensions between the U.S. and China and restrictions, um, ultimately, who does it hurt? I don't know. But is it limiting Americans' ability to invest in these growing companies? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a really good point. And I think another thing that we can come back to is when you talk about growth, I mean, China's market, the Chinese consumer is actually now growing. It's the only country that's expected to see growth annually in terms of GDP this year. And consumer spending actually in that GDP report that we got overnight was better than anticipated. And so that would be a positive for a company like this when we look at it on the global scale and countries like the U.S. are still technically on an annual basis in contraction mode.